Okay guys, welcome back to my YouTube video. Sorry for YouTube video. Um YouTube channel. So today we are just going to be looking at things that I do inside of Capture One. I'm an amateur photographer. Being that um I'm still new to a lot of things inside of photography, but I believe I can share an impact on the level of knowledge and today I'm just going to be showing uh this is a part one of two videos where i go about my edits so today we're just going to be talking about what we do inside of capture one so let's start with this image right here so the very first thing i do is the fact is that i add my crop ratio because instagram is definitely going to crop it for us if we don't crop it ourselves and the best thing to do is crop it ourselves so we can get the perspective that we want so i normally use a crop ratio of four by five you can set that in here i think yeah four by five yes this crop ratio four by five and i just like to keep things maybe overhead but it's just too much so i like to keep the line on her eyes well it's just my it's just my style of doing things but you can also have yours so once we're done with cropping our image then the very first thing you always have to do in every edit is to first correct the white balance the white balance is already looking really good what i mean by correcting white balance is that we don't want our image to be looking like this and then we can't really pick out colors because what we need when we're editing is we need that color separation you don't get me wrong you can add this to your image whether if you like it but let that be after you have done with editing the skin everything all your color grading and everything then you can start adding color grading but what we want to do now is color correction and that's what we're going to do now so the very what i do is i just pick this tool over here and then i go into her eye i then i pick on the white in her eye and then it corrects itself i don't know if you can see the difference but you see it's corrected but it adds um, a bit of green look as if we have a lot of green in the image but that doesn't matter because we are still going to change everything ourselves once we are starting so after that the second thing i go and i do right here is i can also tweak this a little bit if you want feel free to do it anyhow you like i like more of a cold looking image that's what i like and i like adding a bit of magenta just to the it so that it adds power to the skin or we can do that separately in editing so just after doing that then we look at the whole picture and how it looks like and sometimes we try to add contrast to the image and sometimes we try to remove contrast from the image depending on what we're trying to go for you can use your histogram the histogram does this is the darkest part of the image and this is the lightest part of the image you can see just by me hovering above her face you can see that we are on some bright sides and we have some dark sides and we have some very bright areas and some very dark areas so me for me i feel like bringing up this picture just a bit up let's see we can either do that by pushing the exposure itself or we can do that by pushing the brightness i prefer pushing exposure let's use the brightness itself let's use the brightness then we have everything looking flat and we don't really want that so either we play with the shadows or we play with the darks I myself mostly play with the darks. I like pushing the darks down myself because the darks are the ones that are closer to this area and we don't want to start dragging her skin which is close around this area itself. So we just push down the darks itself and maybe just a bit of the shadows. But then we have her skin, the contrast on it, like the light is looking okay. But then we have a lot of light spilling out everywhere. So that's when we now reduce the whites in the area. The whites are the brightest and part of the image. And then we can reduce that down and also reduce the highlights also. So now she's the one that is being in focus. Like if you just take a look at before, this is where we started from and this is where we are right now. But as you can see, we're lacking in saturation. So we add just a bit of saturation to the image itself. Um, I myself, I prefer to reduce contrast because I do a lot of retouching on the face and I like to see, I don't want to have too much details to start walking about and start oh, doing dodge and bone and you see this area is too dark, too bright and having a lot of issues with that and also having to blend the skin with frequent separation and we see a lot of uh, differences in the skin texture so what i do is that i reduce the contrast itself and then 
after I do frequency separation and then dodge and burn, I then add contrast back. You can see that in my next video. I'll definitely I will be showing you guys how I do that and uh, secrets that I use in doing that itself. So that's what that's basically all I do inside of Capture One itself. And sometimes I like to push. Uh, no, no, not clarity. The haze, the haze, just a little bit towards the right. It makes it kind of better. I feel it makes it better. I like I like pushing the blacks to be like absolute blacks. That's what we call it. absolute blacks. I love that. It adds a lot of contrast in the image. But I don't know. I don't like how it's looking right now. Maybe just a little bit of shadow. I feel like I use the contrast just a bit too much. Okay, I like how it's looking like this. Now it's ready for Photoshop. <laughs> That's what I'll say. But we can also do a little bit of playing around with colors itself. And I am going to show you guys a beautiful secret about color grading and how you can get a nice color grade before you send it over into Photoshop itself. So we have the highlights over here and we have the shadows over here. Highlights, shadows, highlights, shadows. So what you can do is, is this color theory we call complementary colors. And that's when you push the colors in opposite direction. So if I have the highlights, I can push the highlights towards the right yeah towards the right and then we push the shadows towards the other side and then it gives a complementary color like this can be your grade but we can push this ones towards blue and then we push the highlights towards the yellow it's another color grade on its own or we can push the highlights towards the green and then we can push the shadows towards the purple another different kind of another different kind of color grade itself so that's just what you can do, but I prefer to do the color grading inside of Photoshop itself. So um, basically, that's basically all I do inside of Photoshop. I can also select the skin tone um, and I unify the saturation, but it's going to affect this. I will have to make a layer marks and I'm not ready to do that. So that's basically all I do. So in my next video, we're just going to be talking about a bit of things that we do in Photoshop. We're going to be talking about frequency separation, dodge and burn, and um, how to correctly add contrast into your images and how to get your images popping out better and having a separation between the model itself and the background. So I would like to see you guys in my next video. I'm sorry that this video took about 10 minutes itself. <coughs> but this tutorial is specifically for people that want to increase their photo, photo like their photographic game and itself. So it's not a general tutorial. So Sorry if it takes too long. That being that, um, I'll see you guys in my next video where I talk about um, frequency separation. So, see you guys in the next video. Bye.